In this episode, we will look at Python's ability to introspect itself. In other words, we will be looking at introspection. We've actually talked about a lot of this stuff already in previous episodes, but I believe it's such an important topic that we're going to take an entire episode just focusing on it. Basically, introspection allows you to take a look at your code and other people's code and figure out what it does. So for example, let's say we have a string that doesn't have anything real important in it, we'll just call it this, and we want to learn about it. Well, we can use Python's little type method to find out what it is. So we know that that is a string, which should be obvious, but what if you had a variable that you didn't know what it was? You just had the letter, the letters VAR. What the heck is that? Well, you can use type to find out. And that'll tell you that that is an integer. And the nice thing about Python is it also provides the dir function, which can tell you a lot about what these particular things can do. So if we do dir on var, we can see that even an integer has a whole bunch of methods that it has available to it. In case you haven't realized this yet, Py everything in Python is an object. What this means is that they always have some kind of method or property to them. Even that string that we did earlier has properties. So let's try that. As you can see, it's got all kinds of good, good properties. And you can actually try those out. You can just do this, and you would do a dot, and try something out, like let's try up or out, for example. We can see what it does. This is extremely helpful for modules that you don't know much about. Let's say you import the sys module and you need to know something about it. Well, you can just do dir on sys and find out a whole lot of its methods. And you'll be like, well, that's exactly what I was looking for. I want to know what the copyright is, for example. I don't know why I want to know what the copyright is. Maybe you just want to know what you can do with Python. Well, there you go. You can also use Python's robust help system. The help system will tell you a lot about the module. So let's take help and use sys for an example. So you can see that, that printed a whole bunch of text. Lots and lots of pages. All right, so we see lots of information. The cool thing though, is that if you need to know about, uh, about something that you saw in the dir, you can actually do help sys dot whatever, like standard in, for example. Let's try that one. And it will tell you exactly what's what. You just have to scroll up and find where it begins. So sys dot standard in is the pseudo input file in the module idle lib dot shell, and then it gives you all the class and functions that are related to that particular function. So that's really helpful. Now you may be wondering where all this help information comes from. A lot of it, and perhaps even all of it, comes from doc strings within the code. Let's actually create our own class with some doc strings so you can have a better idea of what this looks like. So we create a test class and we do the triple quotes. This is a test. And we'll create a function the initialization function that's always required. We don't need to have spaces after those. I'm just doing that for illustration purposes. And well, this is good enough for our test. So we have help, and now we can call help on our test class. It will tell us that test class is, is subclassing the object, which we don't even have to tell it to do. In Python 2, you did have to tell it to subclass from object if you wanted it to subclass from something generic. It also has our doc string. This is a test. And it has our initialized doc string. And then a couple of other, you know, like hidden methods that are included with every uh, module that you create, especially if they're uh, a subclass of the object class. So basically, you can create lots of doc strings to de describe your your code, and then you, when someone else comes along to use your code, they can call help on it, and they'll learn how to use it. You'll need to read up on the documentation website for Python, because it'll explain 
how to do all the fancy stuff that's in this particular code for the sys module. At this point, you really should be able to go out and start trying this on your own code, or on code that you've downloaded, or even just the standard library code, and learn all about how to use it right from your command line or from idle. Have fun, and thank you again for watching.